Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we'd like to welcome back everybody that's viewing worldwide on the internet, www.billiardclub.net. Uh, this is day number seven of the Derby City Classic. You're live in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, to bring you up to date, uh, we've already completed the bank pool division. There was 404 players. It was won by Jason Miller of Dayton, Ohio. Runner-up was John Brumbach of Owenton, Kentucky. And the second of the three events is one pocket. We started with 307 of the world's greatest players, and we're down to the final eight. At this time, we're going to introduce a match on the center court here in Louisville, Kentucky at the Executive West Hotel. And it's a terrific match. Uh, it features our uh, defending champion. He's from Madison, Wisconsin. Please welcome back Mr. Larry Neville, the world all-around champion. Thank you. And his opponent is sponsored on tour by Puyat Sports, player representative for San Miguel Beer. He's a former World Everything's won all the terms there is to win, and he's the most recent inductee into the Hall of Fame. A warm welcome, please, from the Republic of the Philippines, the magician, Mr. Efren Reyes. Thank you. And gentlemen, you may like for the first break, we'd like to turn it over to Danny DiLiberto, one of the all-time greats in his uh, cohort, uh, Mr. Mark Wilson, St. Louis, Missouri. Take it away, Danny and Mark. Thank you. Good Welcome you back, pool fans. Uh, and uh, we have quite a match before Carmine us here. Sardo. Carmine Sardo on the tight rack. Reyes and Neville on the lag. It's going to be close. I think Neville's going to get him. Well, that's maybe uh, his best chance to win this match is to get the first break because you know it's very big. Race to three, you're going to get more breaks than the other person. Uh, despite the fact that Neville is the... Uh, reigning world one pocket champion from this event last year. He's a prohibitive underdog against the likes of the greatest one pocket player perhaps to ever play the game. Efren Reyes. Well, he is at least debatable one of the greatest. You know, uh, I, I have a little problem accepting that, you know, this quickly because, uh, you know, I played with some of the greats in the past and if a person didn't play against the other greats, their opinion shouldn't count as much. I'm not talking about you, you know, in other words, uh, it would be tough beating like Eddie Taylor. How do you like this break? It's gonna be tough beating this break. That's a terrific break. And right now, Efren would be happy to get away with just losing one ball from this position. Well, it can happen. And I'm gonna tell you something else. If he can control this ball, shooting the three at the edge of that ball, give him the ball, force forward, the three coming off the, the balls. You see that uh, 12 ball? In fact, that He'd have a chance to do something there. He's going to put him in the stack. Yeah. He struck that oh, with a nice yeah. pace. I think that very well be a, uh, well be a productive shot. Yeah, it is. Especially when this ball got in Larry Neville's face. Well, he's just going to shoot. Well, he's saying it's no good. A nice try, Efren. <laughs> Efren would rather spot it on top. Because if he spots it on top, Neville can't do this easy escape move, shooting the uh, eight to the rail. Yeah. Efren tried, though, didn't he? Perhaps he should have had the referee come out and spot the ball. Sure that he should have. And that yeah. way that would end any kind of a dispute as to where it goes. Efren's a pretty honest player, so I don't think he was looking for an edge. And nor do I. Uh, and it would have been a perfect time to say, Scott, spot this ball because it did affect the game. Okay, now there's no doubt about where it goes. What do you think you do here? I know what, what I would do. Tell us. Well, there, there's one of two shots. You kick a, a three-rail scratch, you know, and try to put it on this rail near his left arm right now and, and stop uh, Efren from seeing that ball near the pocket. That's one shot. Or he can just go and throw him upstream long and let him cut at the three. You know, he's going to try to duck on the wrong side of the balls. I call that the wrong side of the balls because, you know, the, the, the player's uh, upcoming player is facing his pocket with the cue ball. Seldom would that be the correct play to leave the cue ball this on the wrong not side bad of the stack. Here. Yeah, every now and then it's like a survival shot and that's what Neville's trying to do. He does. He's trying to protect that ball near the pocket. That That's what's good about the wrong side in this case. Of course, if that ball weren't there, it would be a horrible shot. 
Boy, look at the picture here. Our staff does a crack job. The camera crew yeah, and the production great, crew. Great, great picture here. Of course, he can't uh, he can't hit uh, that ball in the pocket. Well, you know what? Well, he's going to uh, try to dock right there, knock the ball to the rail on his side and stick right there. That's a scratch. And not really a productive scratch. No, Efren owes one. Here comes the coin. This is to let you all know he owes one and he has to pay one. Oh, well, that's it. A fan is loaning the money. So the players are ahead a penny already. I'm not sure what Neville's confronted with here well, as he far as any kind of a defensive shot. Yeah, he doesn't have that shot anymore. Well, he does have a shot, you know. He still has the three-rail kick, you know, between the three and 15 and get back on the rail here, maybe behind the 11. He still has that shot. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what, that's a good shot. Yeah, I, mean, that I don't was see anything shot. else he could do, but he should kick three rails between the three and 15. I think he's going to try to curl around here, one cushion behind the eight ball. Uh, I don't know. The eight banks, you could say bye-bye. He's sure looking at it. He's not in a trap anymore if it doesn't go, but uh, I, I think Neville should have took that kick. Well, let's see what happens. Looks like it would be possible for Efren to bank or to play a carom shot on the 10 ball, pocketing, what is that, the 12 ball, and parking the cue ball right on the end rail, removing the 10 and just conceding a ball to Larry just to get a better table position with the balls. That's great, but you have to do one more thing there. You can't let him see the three when you do that or you're going to be in a trap. And you can't give him a bank on the eight either. So it's not, you know, just one I'm little thing you got to watch. Apparently, he can't bank the uh, eight ball. Well, the eight ball would go, but he only has a half a pocket due to the proximity of the 11 ball, the end rail. Yeah, I don't even know if he has half. But he's going to give him the ball and stick there and try not to give him the three. Oh. And distance, but that's he not has encountered a double kiss, yeah. uh, an unanticipated double yeah, kiss. You don't give a shooter a shot because the only chance Neville has is to get shots like this and don't miss. You know, you you play Efren, you get a, an opportunity, you got it, you got to take advantage because you're not going to get many of them. You know, Efren was in a trap this whole game since the break. He never did get out of the break. For this match, we have a capacity crowd here witnessing the goings-on at the 6th Annual Derby City Classic. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know if he got to anything. I think the 9 will go, but uh, he kind of carelessly yeah. bound in there. and uh, He overdid it. He overdid it. He's going to cut at the ball. He wants to keep shooting. I really don't blame him, and he still has a bank on the 3 if... If he doesn't like cutting this ball, he has a pretty good bank on the three. I think the bank on the three. Yeah, yeah and he can go forward, I think, and billiard the uh, 12 ball one 13. rail. 13. The 13, that one is? Yeah, I think he can bank this and spin one rail softly into that 13 ball. Well, he's going to hit rail first into the 13. Nine, Bucky I don't know, he wasn't. He shot at the bank. I like Bucky spinning Bucky forward Bucky one rail into 13. Now, if, if Efren can see the three, uh, he's out of trouble finally. And uh, he didn't get punished too much. Two balls. Right now, so the score is two to minus one. Neville's favor. Yeah, he can bank the three and go uh, towards that uh, four ball. If he that's gets just lodged what he in there. Did. Yeah, look at this. Oh, that's a great shot. Yeah, he can't even hit this 11. So now Neville lost big advantage. You know, the, the break has now been turned around. Even though he's beaten uh, Reyes 2 to minus 1, Reyes made this uh, favorable for his side now. Well, Larry's not going to like the outcome of these little nip and tuck battles. 
Uh, no, he, he didn't do anything here. That was the survival on the wrong side again. So all Efren has to do is uh, draw the ball softly into the rail. Larry would be fortunate to come out of this. That's it. One time in ten. Yeah. Yeah, so Larry just was surviving. Does the 15 bank? If it does, you got my permission to shoot it. Well, the 15 only banks into the stack. It doesn't, it does. go, it doesn't go between the 3 and 8. You know what? That is close. Uh, he's not shooting it, but it is close. What is he doing? He's kicking at kicking the 11. It. Oh, man. Uh, he bounces out a little. He sells out. I don't know what that was. Kicking at the 11. He was all out of offense. He was going to try to create some magic here. Well, at that speed, no accuracy. Yeah. I mean, there was no other shot that he could have been playing with that type of an effort. Yeah, that was a terrible uh, idea. You know, forget the execution. It was a bad idea to start with. He was dreaming up of something there that would have been spectacular had he executed it, but the percentage of possibly executing it was so small that it almost seems like it was suicidal. Well, I don't know if Efren's going to go one rail and soft roll it and try to hold for the three or just continue on right to the 15. Oh, we'll this see about his touch. Yeah. I think he's going right on with it. No, he isn't. No, he got on the 50-yard line. He got, I don't no, know. I Can think he, he's okay. I think he's you, okay. You do? I don't think so. Look at the monitor, man. That's a real thin hit. Look at this on the monitor, but, you know, it's a little misleading. Yeah, that's not even a light snack for a world champion. Well, you got to admit the cue ball is flying around. I think we're going to see one of those snake shots, Danny. I think this is going to load this up with inside spin and just try to get to that long rail, end rail, long rail. Yeah, he put a little reverse on it just to hold for the 15. Falling pretty straight on the 15, so I guess he's going to opt for the 5 and try to drop down on the 8 if the 8 goes. I don't think so. I think he should just stop there, bank the 9, fall on the 8. Yeah, that's a nice bank there. You don't have to do much. Well, he's going to shoot the 5. Oh, you're right. You're right. I thought, well, he has choices. And he's going to the 8 here, I guess. Well, he wanted to hit him with the 2 rail spin. And I don't know if he has a shot. The combination didn't line up dead, but I'll tell you what he does have. He can just shoot right on that ball and knock the three to the rail. That, that is the three. Which one? The green sure. ball. That's the six, six ball. Yeah. It's the six ball. It's the three in snooker. I got all my. It's regular. It's the six in pool. Right. Oh, I've been calling it the three. See, that's okay. the shot anyway. You know, those little ticky-tack shots like that with that speed and the cue ball control, people don't realize what they're witnessing when they the, the degree of exactness that he hits those with consistently, and then you watch some of the other top competition attempt it. And yeah, you're right. It, it looks easy, but it's not because that shot, if you shoot it too hard, it's worthless. You know, he had to, he had to stick the cue ball and yet have the right speed to make that uh, six ball shootable. Okay, Larry, better come with some miracles here. I think he has a two-rail kick. That's all I think he has. Score is now two apiece. Good you know, Carmen, sell, uh, Carmen uh, is like uh, counting for the knockdowns at the bell. Shannon's got some numbers. He's got the two rail kick at the six, and that game that came up in an earlier match, right? Remember the two rail kick perfectly. And it is a common scenario that occurs in one pocket, a conservative two rail kick that you're willing to accept a foul just to eliminate the possibility. He doesn't see it, I guess. Well, he's playing offense. Yeah. Oh, what a shot! And he's executing offense. Yeah. And that's, uh, well, I'll tell you what. That's his only chance. You know, if he gets. Flyers at the pocket, and he can make them. He can win this match. In a moving duel, he's going to get the worst of the fire by far. Well, if he can make this nine, I think he can fall on the six for a bank. Well, how about this? Wow, great shot again. Yeah, the eight goes. 
That ball stopped the cue ball from flying around. If he makes this, he can fall on the seven, and then I believe the one goes, and he got the perfect angle for that. Go right to the one, or even the combination, but uh, does the one go by? He's looking right now, I guess it does. He didn't look too long. Neville's playing for three balls. Yeah, if he falls on these, he can get out. He may have overhit this. Thing, well, he may have been playing for the combination. Maybe the one didn't he go. No, I think you're right. Yeah. Now he needs two. All he has to do is keep one ball there. Probably the one if he draws back. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He needs two now. And, then, you know, and it could be that way when the game ends. And he needs to spot a ball. That will block the corner pocket because he knocked one in out of the... Didn't he? Or am I incorrect? You're right. He made a ball somewhere. Yeah, side pocket. You got to put it up. Okay. Ooh, that makes that a big difference. Really, well, maybe. Maybe he sh he'll shoot the combination and he has another ball down here. I He's going to shoot. You know that. He don't have much choice. He's going to shoot. See, now the eight on the spot. Tremendous uh, shot. The eight on the spot gave him another ball. I mean, uh, never a doubt. He's supposed to say never a doubt. Tremendous shot. He was frozen to the cushion and had the, only a half a pocket to play with on that combination shot. Not much margin of error. About five minutes, we're going to have a... He rattled it home, and I'm going to tell you, that was, a, that was a nerve tester. Have to shoot that shot. But certainly put him back in the ball game here. Okay, is he going to go one rail to the one? I think he could. High ball, a little bit of right-hand English, stiffen it. Or is he going to go all the way down to the 11? He needs uh, three more balls, I believe, so he may go right to the 11. If he falls on the 11, he can get out here. Well, it would appear that the 11 ball is his ball of choice. Yeah, well, if he's going to try to get all the way out, fall on the 11, because the one goes. He's closely scrutinizing the part of the rail that he would like to get to. Yeah, it looks like he's winding up to go to the 11. Oh, oh no, boy. he hit it bad. He never caught the end rail. He's going to get away with it. The point's going to help him a little bit. I don't call this getting away with it. He left himself a miserable shot. See, he, he let up in the stroke. Remember earlier you said he's having trouble drawing the ball? That was the case there. He did not draw that ball. Well, he popped up out of his stance. If you were watching this on replay, you could examine that, and he come up out of that shot yeah. in a hurry. I didn't see him shoot one like that all week. Well, he may have no choice but to go on with the shooting. He is not confident about his playing right now, and it's affecting his... No. Uh, well, didn't he Technique. just get a new cue and a different uh, uh, tip on it and all that? That's always tough to adjust to. I have trouble with that. Well, it's not just a new cue. The shaft is clearly well broken in. But it's a Judd cue out of the Philippines, and he told me he's playing with a Tiger medium tip. He used to always play Elk Masters many years. Well, I tell you what, he can look and look all he wants. He's going to have to shoot this ball. And if he makes it, he can get out. And if he misses it, he can uh, rack him for the next game. Well, it's actually uh, his break. Well, he, didn't, he you know what he tried to do? He tried to kick the one. He tried to kick the one. Well, anyway, he's out of trouble now. You know, he needs one now. No, they both need two. They both need two, and it uh, looks like he's going to have to give Neville this uh, ball in the pocket and four. And just play it with two balls on the table, needing both of them. Right. It's just one yeah, mistake away hurt. from winning. He's going to try to play a billiard. It's a move a ball on his. Yeah. This is maximum. No, he's. <laughs> <laughs> he bet the that's, game on that shot. That's Danny. The, yeah, that's the uh, uh, one pocket blinkers that I was talking about in another match. He never even paid attention. The game ended with that ball <laughs> hanging there. <laughs> Look at his smile. He yeah. bet the game on that bank shot. What a shot. Yeah, that well, is amazing stuff there. Greatest. You're right, he bet the game. I never thought he'd do that. But 
I kind of thought he might be content to battle Larry. Yeah, uh, so did I. In a two to so one scenario, I. because he's not that big of an underdog losing both of those balls. Well, you know when what they he figured? A moving game. You know what he figured? If it came to that point where he needed two and the other guy needed one, forget about the ball hanging, because he was going to have to give him that ball, the only other shot. So he figured out that later he'd have to get to a shot where he can shoot, make two. And he had it already, so he shot it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a step ahead of all of us. Yeah, that's what he did. He figured, I want to get to this point anyway a little while. I might as well do it now. That uh, was a perfect diagnosis, and uh, it's, it's nice to have an experienced one-pocket player here in the booth to elucidate the fine points of the game for those of us that aren't quite as well-versed. Did the window open? I the think the window opened for this uh, eight ball. I think that was a uh, stab in the heart of Larry Neville's uh, opportunity to win this match. He was already a prohibitive underdog. He had battled his way through that game to, yeah. to perhaps put himself into a position where he would be the favorite to win the game. And then for Efren to reclaim the game from a couple of awkward positions like that, that's, that's got to be very it hurts. It debilitating. I don't know what he what he can do. If can he hit the eight and cross it, or could he kick it? Kicking it is a great shot, you know. Well, uh, he can hit the rail, and he he doesn't see the shot. The view on our monitor doesn't yeah, suggest that he necessarily does ha uh, have the gap that you're suggesting that he does. I think he's going to kick three cushions, try to get in behind the eight, and use a speed that's such that if he doesn't hit the eight, he doesn't sell out the eight. This looks like a pretty well struck ball. I have to give Larry credit. That was a knowledgeable shot. It's a survival shot. That's all. You're going to well, wind up in a jam anyway, you know, and he's just trying to survive a little. I guess he couldn't hit that eight at all. Yeah, right? I don't believe he could. No, no. Uh, no it, it's hard to discern from something. here. Yeah. See, he doesn't have to make this ball. He could overcut bank it and just try to spin past the 12 ball. I don't believe he's going to try that at all. I think he's thin the 11 ball and try to get the cue ball back into the pack between the 7 and the uh, 13 ball area. I don't, I don't know. He might have a billion no. on that pink ball. I think. Uh, you're right. Yeah, I think yeah he's you're supposed right. To he's, cut this thin. He's going to try to bank it off the 8, perhaps. Maybe. Yes, he did. Or make the 8. It's a good shot at any rate because you look where the cue ball is. He, well, he sold nothing. And he would have had a shot. He took so a chance to win the bad. game or, or right. reestablish uh, total control over this particular rack. Good thinking there. But we expect him to think uh, that well. Even after we witness a shot, we have to uh, use some conjecture yeah. to determine just what in the hell it was. He was. Billiard. He's playing a billiard. He's giving him the 8 and trying to billiard the 11 in. And not only trying it, he did it. That was a tremendous yeah. shot. Yeah, and he got the four. That was a great shot. That was pretty creative, too. And a knowledgeable audience uh, gave some decent applause for the respect of a perfectly knowledgeable shot. Well, he may have a bank that he can kill and play position for the 12 here, or the 13. Well, he didn't put a whole lot of thought into what kind of a shot. He kind of bludgeoned on through there. And no, you're right. Willing to accept whatever came out of there. Sometimes it works out, sometimes not. I think he can bank at the seven ball, but he, now he's going to bank the combination, too. If that goes, that's even safer. Yeah. He, he's trying to bank this ball, combination, stick the cue ball, and he'll have the uh, 12. It stiffened a little. Just that upward cut, put a little right-hand English on the ball and made it stiffen. The friction of cutting it a little, put right-hand English on the ball. Okay, the score in this rack is one ball apiece now. Reyes leads the match one game to zero. And Reyes has a bank uh, and could win the game from here. Shoot the ball, draw the cue ball. And he has a chance to get out. I don't know, the angle may be just a little off, but he can stick it. Three matches, Ray Crane. Make up your nose with Keith is ready. He's drawing the ball for position on the 14. Well, he missed it, but he did have the 14. Coming in just a little bit short. All right. 
What do we do now? Well, Larry's looking for something. That 10 ball would bank over at the 14. He might be content with that. He doesn't want to leave him that kick on that combination. He just eyeballed that. Now he's looking down there to see how it looks. He was to just leave him long, yeah. That's what he's doing. He's banking his ball at the 14. He's putting the cue ball way in that far right-hand corner. And he hit it pretty good. He hit it pretty good. And look at this. Uh, there is no shooting at this uh, 13 ball for sure. This guy which one is the 13, right? which one is the 12? The uh, 13 is on the front side of the table near the rail, and the 12 is down here by the 14. Looks like he's going to try to billiard off some balls into the 14. Off there. You just can see the ball, and that was well played, well thought out. Where are you residing these days? Mobile, Alabama? Wilmington, North Carolina. Now, one aspect of the game, and this is critical, that Larry worked to get the cue ball to a location each and every time when he goes for the cushion, that that cue ball lodges right up on the cushion. The anyway, score of this match is uh, Reyes won in game, nothing for Neville, and Neville is leading this game 2-1. to one. Now we're going to see a little volley of safety play. Well, he might be too round and at those two balls. I can't see any advantage, but unless he does that, that is a great shot there. Uh oh, he's got up in a trap here. Oh, this is a big trap. What do you do, Mr. Magician? Very well come with some magic here. I'll tell you what, he's looking to bank the eight. Can he get in there enough? I, no, mean, I don't know. Doesn't. No. According to the monitor, he can't. The way it looks to me, he's going to have to take a scratch and just lag the cue ball over behind the 12 ball. Yeah, you're right. Good shot. That's the survival shot. He's looking for something a little more creative. He's going to try to... Oh, he's taking a scratch. He's going to have uh, Larry give him a chance to possibly hang himself with a poor shot selection. Hello, hello. Uh, Mickey Hammond in the front, please. Mickey, to the front, please. Now the score is 2-0, Neville. Okay, what does that one have in mind here? Larry's well, hitting he, downward. Well, he wanted, to, he wanted him to shoot at something. He wanted him to shoot at something so he could get out of the trap and hope that he didn't do something great. Now, uh, is he going to shoot at the one? I suppose he will. Can he get position? Or will he come off that rail and billiard the seven perfectly? I mean, he's going to fly back and forth. He's going to have to put a little left-hand English on the ball to make this. It appears the five would go if he could gain position from this, but it's a very thin hit. Yeah, I don't think... Easy to make a mistake and possibly yeah. lose the whole game from this shot. Best thing you can do here is not miss the ball and take whatever comes up. Yeah, he's got to make the ball. He did that, and he bounced back and forth. Good speed. Look at this speed. Tough shot to do that with. He's got the, uh, the nine ball. He's got the five ball. He's examining where the cue ball would go. Yeah, he's looking to go to the two, possibly. He's shooting the uh, five, and he's going to try to go. No, the, yeah, he's shooting the five. He's trying to go to the two ball. I don't know if he wanted to go two rails that way. Wouldn't you think he wanted to go around it? And again, that would be the lack of low on the cue ball. I right? don't know. He put his finger on the hit. The cue ball went right where his finger touched on that second Yeah, but I, I can't imagine going two rails. Well, I think you hit it lower and you get by it. But at, whatever he did, he's perfect. Especially if the nine ball goes. I'm surprised yeah, he took does. that kind of a chance. I don't understand. Yeah, I, I, again, it could be that little bit of where he's not getting low into the cue ball. That's my guess. I'm not sure. but Very long bridge. Went through the balls nicely that time. Got a shot, too, doesn't he? Yeah, he's received a shot on the 13 for sure. I don't know if the six ball will pass cleanly. No, he's looking so. at the six, isn't he? Or is that the 13? Yeah, the 13. Well, he got to nothing now. Again, that lack of draw. 
Well, that was sensitive. He didn't want to go too far. I know, but that's like three in a row where you needed to get a little more low reaction on the cue ball. Well, if we do an interview, if he happens to hold on and win this match, I'm going to ask him about that. If if uh, if the cue ball's coming off a little different when he hits it low, knock the balls away and get behind the balls. Perfect control. What do you do now? I just, I don't know if he can miss the eight. I think he can go off the seven, bank the seven and go upstream. Now you're getting in trouble. See, it? bank the seven, and even if you go at the 15 with it, just hit it on the full side and get up there. Yeah, he's going to shoot it now. Maybe just cut at it, but it never lasts get up there. That's what he did. That's a perfect spot to put effort in, especially if you put him on the rail, which he didn't. He can shoot this 15 and knock three other balls away here. Yeah, he figures to use some pace just to stop the cue ball down there. He'd be able to cue yeah. up low. He's going to probably knock all those balls away. And all those balls meaning the 7 to 15 and is that the 14? He's kicking at this. It looks like he's going to kick in behind Yeah, he didn't want to do any of that other stuff. I like that shot. Well, that was the most secure way with, you know, most control, but I think he could have went straight at it with speed, too. I, I'm, I know he could have. I think he was afraid he may end up giving Larry some type of a bank shot if he was to disperse them. So I figured he'd leave some cluster over there for Larry to work with and just battle him from here. Well, Reyes is leading uh, this game 5-2. to two. It's the second game of this match. Reyes leads one nothing. Larry pocket the ball in the side pocket. And right now, Efren only has one ball on his half of the table. See, Efren is such a good chess player. That last inning, when he just kicked it away, he figured he could later me move this ball. Instead of banking that other one into it, he figured, I'm going to have a chance to knock it away next shot. You don't have to do it now. And you that's know, just what happened. It may seem like an oversimplification, but look at what nice speed the cue ball is right on the cushion where Larry has to really elevate, and the opportunity for him to make a mistake with an elevated cue is greatly heightened. Efren is the master of moving that cue ball around the table and lodging it right on the cushion. He's very conscientious about that. I don't know if you ever noticed that he gets the maximum out of each and every opportunity. Knock another ball upstream. This up table game will not favor the underdog. No, especially if he's already behind five to two. Uh-oh, we got trouble. Pick it up. We got trouble. Oh, man. Well, you've yeah, got big trouble. Well, really, I he doesn't, well, he has to spot one, so Efren's gonna at least have a spot shot. He was trying to do something a little bit too much uh, with getting the ball on his side of the table, and he forgot the cue ball. He, he tried to be too productive. He wasn't as defined about his shot selection, and he kind of shot with a little bit of ambiguity and just kind of in the middle of his thoughts, let it go, and it completely got away from him and bit well, him. He needs three. This one down the rail, bank on the eight, and the one off the spot. See how fast I won the game from here? <laughs> yes, you did. Oh, he no. hit the point. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, Neville. <laughs> Look, Look at him laughing. Everyone's laughing. He really yeah. don't feel like laughing. Right into the point. He's a funny guy. He really is a funny guy. Well, Neville was trying to get some more. You know, he wanted to get those balls in play, which, which was a good attempt, but he just didn't do it. Get what you could, Neville, and duck, because you're in the game. He makes this ball, it's going to be 5-4. The first night I got here, Efren was struggling a little bit in the practice table, and it clearly appeared that he was a little bit rusty. And he came over to me, and he said, Mucky, can't I play good no more? And I said, yeah, right. <laughs> Tell me about it in three hours. Five, yeah. yeah. Five to three, and he got straight in. This ball comes back. He can have the 14 also. Oh, look at how tricky it was right off the point he almost had position okay Efren suddenly this game switched 
We got a little war here. Five to three, Efren. They are having a little problem uh, being sure that proper score five to three. Right, so you're left in the, uh, nine ball. After everybody has played three rounds yeah. of matches. Efren is in a bind too. He's in a bind here with that 13 ball uh, virtually in the jaws of Larry's pocket. Yeah. There's a, definitely some question about the score. Efren's laughing. He wants to take a break here, I think, and maybe uh, think back on the shots. They're pointing to our score, but ours is not the official score. When I say our score, I'm talking about accurate stats. Our, our staff knows our score is right, so we're going to live with our score. Five to three, Reyes, and we will bet our bippies on it. Right? We'll bet our bippies. Well, at the very least, we'll, we'll bet Merlin's check on it. What's a bippy, anyway? I hear people betting their bippies now for years. What is a bippy? Well, I'm not quite certain about that either. Everyone's thinking of trying to play a two-rail bank and, and uh, stun the cue ball back about one ball's width to lodge up on the 10. That'd well, if he does shot. it, it, it'll be some howling, but he's also thinking of kicking and giving them this 12 ball. Which is the ball's width out of the pocket and nearly frozen to the cushion. It's not a very big margin of error with that shot. Well, he doesn't have any good choices. That's the thing. You know? And the other thing, if he's confident about hitting it, uh, he's probably not going to lose an abundance yeah. of balls from there. And he's back to this shot. Okay. Well, well, that was a simple escape shot. You know, survival. Know that, that was your survival out. tactics I there. That's gonna, you know. I think Larry's going to bank at the seven ball and at the very least get it back down in that vicinity of his pocket. Yeah, you're right. It was a survival shot. You know, let the guy shoot at something. Oh, he hit this so good. He hit this so good. Well, you see, uh, Efren was playing the percentages and sometimes... You know, this is what makes the percentage. You know, if you do this 10 times, maybe two at a time, the guy will make the ball. That's what made the percentage against him here. Here's well, a he's bank to a big pocket. Right at it. I don't know if he's don't blame close. Him. I think don't he's blame him a bit. Shoot that ball. Well, yeah. I think it was a good decision. It is. Well, do it again then. <laughs> do it with the uh, six ball now. He very well may. Yeah, you might as well. You've been going at it, and it's been working. And if he hits it with the right speed, it's going to be lodged right down in there. It's going to create a problem. Except he can't reach it this time. What's this going to be? I don't think he can cut at this. The pocket is in the way. He can cut at this one. Not bad. Hit it thin. At least get it handy. You'll get credit for it. Good shot. Great shot. Okay. Oh, he's he's going to roll it in. If he rolls it, he'll catch the point. Major stock holder in Anheuser-Busch. And he did. What a shot. What a nice throw. Very smooth on the transfer. Crowd of applause. You see that shot? You people out, out there, I mean, if he shot it harder, the cue would have glanced initially more and went right in the pocket. So you had to have accuracy and the right speed, and this is the right speed and accuracy, too. Our match is tied up at yeah. one game apiece. Yeah. The and metal breaking. Yeah, he, uh, he regained the benefit of the break. He got himself together there and played solid. Efren tried to you know do what he could to survive one more inning, and it just didn't happen. I guess if he had to do it over again, he would kick at that ball uh, on second thought. Well, he thought of that one, but like you say, it was uh, almost frozen, and uh, the, the kick would have been perfect. And But the thing is, right now, the worst could have happened, he would have lost with it, which he did anyway. But uh, Neville played awful well to get out from there. 
Yeah, my friend's gamble uh, didn't pay off that time. But I'll have to say this, defensive effort, it was the right choice. You know that old saying, that the operation was success, but the patient died? That's what happened there. Well put. Okay. Well, we're not sure exactly what kind of a shot Efren's facing. It doesn't well, look like he's got anything much to work with. He doesn't have the four rail kick because of the uh, 13 ball. And when you have Efren standing there thinking this long, you know it was an effective break. He might be trying to do a pocketectomy by re a ball removal. Yeah, I don't know. He might have to kick one rail the long rail and just like, kind of take a scratch and survive right, once. Uh, or he can shoot that shot and freeze on the uh, uh, seven and uh, three. He has that. And he'll knock this ball on his side and freeze on the seven three. That's what he's doing. Yeah, How about that? Oh, he did a little more than that. The shot. We'll, we'll see where Mendes. he put the cue ball on the 7-3. That was the big part of the shot. Anything good happens, great. And it did happen. He has turned this game completely around. Yes, Larry's in a lot of trouble here. Yeah. And there's enough balls open for Efren to put some serious damage on him. By the time we're done here, Efren's going to have access to the 14 at the worst which would mean that ball will be removed and he's going to have the balls distributed on his side. I'll tell you what I would do here. I would shoot him up the rail and put him dead straight on the six where he has no chance for position. Shoot him on the end rail straight in where he has to just shoot the three, I mean the six. Oh, you like boy. that shot? It's a good shot. I don't know. He's trying to do something else. I think he's trying Give. to come back down table behind the six. Oh, boy. I don't know. It's an aggressive effort. He hit it good. He's going to hit the right side of the six. What a great shot. That was a tremendous shot. But mine was a good alternative. You know, let him shoot at that one ball, you know, and uh, you'll be back to the table. He made a great shot there. An absolute great shot. And he's really turned this game back around in his favor yeah. from nowhere. Yeah, he's got balls that are scorable. He's got about six of them that score seven if you count the 11, and Efren's got about three. It looks like he's thinking about, I don't know if he has it, but if he could get rail first beneath the 13 ball, soft speed, he might be able to come off the cushion into the 13 and two cushion in behind the 14. Yeah, but if you shoot too hard, you can scratch and shoot too easy, you leave a bank on the six. So he's he's got to do six. something. He's going to try to force under it. Look at this shot. A little harder, the six is going towards the pocket, but the main thing was control. That was a great shot. I think he had to sacrifice the, the rest of Great the shot, shot in an effort to get yeah. the cue ball where it did. And I think he tied the balls up a little also. Once again, Larry comes to the table in a little bit of a bind. He's got quite a bit of work to do in front of him to escape. What do I have to do to trap this guy, he said. Is he conceding this ball? And no, he tried to be aggressive. And, and he did. It was but not a bad shot. Yeah, well, the double kiss, he was pretty fortunate. Well, fortunate or not, this is how it stands. It's the rules. You play from where the cue ball stops, right? Yep. He's playing well. He deserves a little bit of a roll. We're going to go behind the 13 and then around to the back side of the 14 here. Well, play the more conservative shot. I think Neville can go two rails right into the uh, five and eight. I, I think mean, he's almost yeah, cut he the 14. No, there. he can go two rails at the pile. Get it? That's the most effective. That's the shot right there. You can execute that. Now, he Perfectly. May have, he Perfectly. may wow. have painted effort into the corner where he has to bank the 11. Yeah, well, the thing about it is if he banks the 11, he's got a combination three, five, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, he's not just shooting at the moon here. He is going to get a chance to get more, you know. Might not be a bad shot, because it looks to me like uh, you keep messing around, it might get worse. I don't you think might not even have this shot. I don't think it's laying right. I think he oh, should no. uh, kick two cushions underneath the 14. 
You mean he can't get past the... Uh, I don't think the five, five goes as easily as he... Oh, no. I think it's aimed to the high side a little bit, and the seven precludes him from uh, He's going to kick this two-rail shot yeah. on the inside of that ball. Take that's a scratch if he has to. I think that's the best shot. Sure is. The other shot, he was risking the game, trying to play well, that. Except for the combination, which I'm pretty sure it's, it's pocketable. You know, it might not be exactly straight in, but it's pocketable. Uh, except for that, he might have a bank here. You know, he might uh, shoot all out on this 14. Or he can two rail and put him back in there, but he'd have to move this ball away. Well, he's going to try the same thing, but he's moving the ball I think he's willing away. to take a, a foul, no? He's no, moving the he, 14. he shot it the way I said, and he put the cue ball right back in his spot. Efren, you didn't like it there before, and you might not like it there now. Well, I think he likes it because the 14's gone from there, no matter what. Yeah, that helps, but he's still just like, surviving right now. Well, he better get somewhere good here because he he's not going to get the best of this. I mean, look at this. Two rail bank on the 11 if he wants it. I don't know. That's a little off. You still have to worry about this combination. This combination's close. The combination is actually improved now with yeah. where the location of the seven is. Larry may be able to draw back into the pile. Looks like he's well, getting he better for that. because he's going to leave some kind of combination. No, he went all up oh, with a two-wheel yeah, shot. This hit. Oh, pretty good hit. Pretty good hit. And look at he, he squatted the cue ball. Well, Efren can manipulate from here. He's not in that yeah, bad of a problem. Yeah, he can come off the 11, bank the 11 on his side and go behind the 14. Or is that the 10? That is the 14 on That's the end the rail. Yep. Bank the 11 on your side, go behind the 14. That's what he has. Well, Efren would dearly like to bank that 11 onto the 7 with a little bit of speed, but the 6 ball probably prevents that. Oh, definitely, definitely. Sean, I call it a pretty good move there because he's getting the ball in play, and if he freezes him on that 14, Neville's going to have to do something. Yeah, I think that probably is after looking at the table. That's, it's very convenient to execute that type of a shot. And, as uh, much as he would like to do something that would be even more offensive-minded, I think it might be premature. But right now, he's running an analysis here with the risk and reward. Yeah, he's going to look forever, and then he's going to do the shot I called. Well, he's drawing, isn't he? Oh. Yeah. Yes. He's drawing the ball. Yeah, he wanted a little more speed on it. Well, that was a tremendous shot nonetheless to do what he yeah, did. He that just he moved another ball his way, and that was very big. To hit that at that speed, you really have to load it up with backspin in order to hit it that softly and get the backspin to still be retained upon the cue ball. Shot. Does he have a trick bank shot here? I don't think he does. He doesn't? I don't you think, don't think he can twirl that 14 one rail? Right now, Guess he's not. in trouble. He's going to try to... Uh, come back on the end rail, not even sell out the five, I think. Well, this is going to take some execution to do this shot. And he's in deep trouble. Yeah. Deep trouble. Well, he played a fine game last game. This game, he got a little confused in a bad spot. I think the patience wore a little bit thin there. I think the, the pressure that effort had, had kept upon him throughout the early portions of the rack has finally taken a toll. Yeah. It's like a series of body blows, and now he can go for the head. Yeah, he has brought the arms down for sure. Well, he has the combination. It's just a case of which combination. 15 into the 5 or 8 into the 5? 2 into the 5. 2 into the 5. They're all dark. Pretty sure he's going to play the 2 into the 5 first. Left-handed nonetheless. Yeah, he plays almost as well left-handed, you know. You think he put hours in practicing left-handed? Oh, I'm sure he did. Uh, he's quite gifted anyway. Another combination and go to the 11-7. Uh, <laughs> he's grinning once again. Look at this. Well, he's all right here. He's going to go to the 7-11. Jacked up. 
Nice oh. shot. He got a little He's lucky okay. if he has the shot. He's okay, I think. He wants to grin. I don't know. He's froze on that. Yeah, he, he appears a little bit concerned about his position, his predicament. Once again, some great camera work. Yeah. Let's see that. We've got the best in the business here. Yeah. He's froze on the four. It's hard to tell whether it passes or not. Maybe he can only roll it in. Soft speed. Look at that, what, a, what a half an inch means here. He could have gone two rails and got all the way out. And he still made. He looks like he's not going to even pay attention to the four. That's what he did. Ball was not in the way. That's a great shot. Yeah, now he can soft draw it into the three, and he'll have the seven. I think it sits to do that. Or if he wants to stroke it, if you hit the seven, you got the three drawing it, and if you missed the, the seven, I mean, you know, the, you missed the seven, you hit the three, you got the seven. Well, the main thing is draw the ball. You see what I'm talking about? These shots, he plays with, he yeah. doesn't just guess. He, he's playing for one or the other. Yeah, that's the shot. He does not bludgeon on through there and hope to get something. He never does it. No, it way. was a case of where if you hit the other one, you have the other ball. So I wholeheartedly you know, yeah. agree. I, I'm just saying it, it, in comparison to some of the previous one yeah. pocket matches where guys just send the cue ball sailing through the zone, oh, Efren yeah, never plays it that way. That's right. It went exactly where he wanted it to. Too. Now he can follow across or draw back. I think he can run at all of them here. He undershot it a little, just a little, but he could still fall on the uh, 14. Well, that's a circumstance where I think if he was going to fall a little bit short or a little bit long, he preferred to be a little bit short to preserve an angle to drift over behind the cluster right. of good, balls. Good point, good point. He certainly didn't want to be straight in, although he could have managed from straight in as well. This well, if he, uh, if he breaks uh, Neville's serve here, it's his break. And he goes ahead two to one. I think he's going to play position for the nine ball next. And he has the cross corner bank on the six if he doesn't like the nine ball. He's falling pretty nicely for the nine, it would appear. Yeah. And he might want to play for the bank. What does he have? Six? He needs two he needs balls. Two. He needs two. He's looking to cut the 14. Maybe billiard the... Uh, 13. Well, if the nine ball is sitting pretty easy, it's hard to pass that up because that puts you on the hill. That means the other man needs to, has to get every ball out there. Yeah. That's hard to pass that up. Yeah, he's got to play this and I think take the bank on the six. Yeah, I don't think he can get this ball to grab enough to get back where he is. He might be able to draw around three cushions for the 10. No. No, he the, played for the, the six. Bank. Yeah. Pretty good. Has to stiffen it a bit. Yeah, he got a little in he the funny fun, zone. Yeah, yeah. He got that uh, double kiss stiff. What do you think about a bank into the 14? Is two that rails, too, yeah, I like too it. risky. No, two rails. Because that uh, those draw the, the ball a little bit. The 12 and 13 ball both go in Larry's pocket. All pair. Larry would wing at anything at this point. Oh, look at that. He got the most out of that. Yeah. Tremendous shot. Still not enough, but he got the most. You're right. Once again, maximum backspin to arc the cue ball out of the corner pocket, yet the speed that he had. There's, I don't see any of the top one pocket players that are able to execute that shot routinely. Yeah, he's, he's just a great cue ball artist. It's so subtle. You don't realize it, uh, how he had to arc the cue ball out of that scratch path. Just beautiful. And you know, when you look at his grip on the cue, it's so light. It almost looks like a dish rag. I mean, there's no tension whatsoever in his grip hand, and it's just 19 yeah. ounces of cue doing all the work. Well, you're right about that. You get much more action on the cue while when, when the cue does the work. Well, Larry, he's, he's just hoping for anything. He, he's willing to shoot. He just can't find something to shoot at. There's, not, there's really something to shoot, but it's absolutely berserk, and uh, this six is in the way anyway, you know. I think he's willing to try to carry him at the 13, or anything. Just knock it away and survive one more inning. Anything can happen. The balls are all out in the open. Well, see you later. 
Maybe. Did he leave? No, he, no, he left 13 him. at the he, least. He's got yeah. them all. He's uh, got them all. Well, he only needs one. It's the 13 at the yeah. very least. And he'll arc the cue ball around the 14. Not the easy shot to negotiate. If he can play the six, he'd prefer to do that. Well, that's what he's got. He, does he know that uh, that's all he needs? Oh, yeah. He's, he's looking at oh. something else. If he can make that uh, six, maybe he doesn't know he's out. I think he does. That, uh, well, it's then it's a little bit tenuous. It's not the seven balls impeding it just a little bit. I think he might feel I like. I doubt it. All right. I doubt yeah, it. Yeah, I guess you're right. He clearly knew it was game ball because he wouldn't have pushed this in the cue ball there if he thought it was anything else. Well, he takes a two to one lead now, and uh, Neville has broke twice and not won once on his break. So now he's got to fade Reyes' break. And uh, if he could happen to fight and win this one, he's still in a good spot because his break is the final game. But he's got a big if. He's got a spot for him to break and take it away from him. Well, Larry showed some real heart there in the second game to come back from a, a being behind after losing a real heartbreaking There's game in the first. Good look at Larry. He's saying, well, what do I have to do to beat this guy? You know, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to see after this break. Look at his face. In order to win a tournament, sometimes you have to create something from nothing, and this will be his opportunity. Well, hopefully not a track break. A little soft. A little soft, so he got his wish, if that's where he w was wishing about. He he is lucky here. Efren hit it way too soft. you got to get that cue ball at least past two diamonds. Now can he stiffen this? I don't think he can. Well, he that. doesn't have to. He can two rail this and one rail the cue ball onto the uh, 12 ball. That would be perfect. Yeah, but he looks like he... Well, he, he wants to like, jack yeah, up in spirit. Two rail it and let the cue ball go right onto the balls. I don't no care good. much for that no shot. Good. No good. He left yeah. the bank. He left a bank that could possibly be free. It looks like he's billiarding uh, the three ball. And uh, if he banks the 13, he'll have a cut on the uh, five. I'm pretty sure he'll be shooting. And if we're going to examine all the possibilities, there's a couple close calls in here. It would appear that if he was to bank the 13, the cue ball may glance off the three, leaving the 14 available for Larry should he not pocket the 13 on the bank. You have to shoot this. You do have to shoot this. There are those who'll say you don't have to shoot it, but I believe he's got to shoot it. He's thinking about it. He, you know, the whole problem is he's trying to see the glance that, you know, he's going to go into the three way. He's shooting the three, and then he's sure of hitting the four, 14 foot. No, he didn't even mess with any of it. I thought he was banking at the three, but I guess he knows he's on the hill here, and he doesn't want to give this guy a chance. Yeah, I think he just didn't want to, um, he wanted to expand on his edge here in this game as opposed to run a risk of Larry getting some kind of big stroke going and run a series of balls and get him back behind in the, in the game and turn the balls in his favor. Oh, Larry's left the cue ball on the wrong half of the table and seldom will you escape the likes of Efren Reyes by doing so. Yeah, he's not going to like... Uh, Even if it's just a routine escape shot, if he just lags off the 10, the Bumps to the 11. He's going to trap and put another ball in play. He's willing no, to accept the foul. The point. No. no, he didn't want to, but he's he willing. Did. Yeah, he he's did. willing just to make sure the cue ball doesn't get away from him. Larry's still in the bind. Now I'll take a scratch and throw him all the way up there. Double him up and everything. You see, it put him on that first diamond and the end rail there. Mm, I don't think he'd like it. The effort to just bank the four ball and roll the cue all the rail. No, oh, he's still going to go on the wrong side of the balls. Yeah, he's in trouble. He's in deep trouble. Look at this. He might have come all the way. No, he didn't. He's okay. Well, he's going to shoot another shot. That's all. Efren can lay on the four ball. 
which would be a very good chat right now. Yeah, just laying on the far ball and perhaps causing him uh, some occasion to have to elevate his cue to shoot the majority of the shots. And you know one nice thing about these uh, diamond tables is there's not a slate seam to negotiate there, and that's right about the point where that might come into play if there was. It's a one-piece slate they're using here. I know. I understand that. But if a table is put together properly, you don't have to worry about the seam. But, but you're right, it is a thing that can possibly show up. Efren doesn't like his shot. I think he may have committed another foul there. Did you see him rub off the ball? I guess no, I thought I it maybe he was know. looking for another coin, okay. No, I think his uh, score here is zero to minus one. Ne Neville's favor. But he's in trouble game-wise. Must win this game. Level's playing a three-rail bank. Just a and he's bit playing his wall. Look at this speed. Efren shooting the three. Doesn't matter. I don't think he's going to mess with the five unless he cinches the five and takes the bank on the 12. But I think he, well, he's got choices. He can shoot the three. He can shoot the five and take the bank on the 12. Those are the two choices, I would say. Or he can cut the 14 down the rail. He's shooting the three. What a great shot. Yep. What a great shot. He shoots the three, and uh, he may have to bank that uh, 13, 13 ball. ball now. Yeah, I don't I don't see any big gain here. I don't know. The nine, does the nine go off of the uh, four ball? That's yeah, possible. Yeah, because Neville will be looking for something he like that. He certainly will. His back is against the wall, and he'd like it to come out. Uh, Flailing. Shootable. I can remember back in the old days, Dallas West, when he would get in this predicament, he would he would shoot at all the balls that would go and some that wouldn't. Yeah. The old days. How about the older days <laughs> than before Dallas West? Yeah. Heffern might be cutting the 12 onto the 5. Yeah, it's free. Yeah, I'll just move it down he, there. He didn't hit it very good. Well, yeah, just totally played the speed. Enough. He didn't hit it that far away. He was going for the cushion there. He's only a ball's yeah. width away. Yeah, he hit it pretty uh, well. It, it was he the, snookered him on all the balls that go. And it was the classic, put one on the end rail, one on the long rail near the pocket, both of them, but it's awful hard to defend. Well, let's look at this uh, billiard, nine off the two, off the four. He's not even looking at it. It must not be too good. Larry might be too railing the 13 yeah. and just move the cue ball down table. Not long, not short enough. Well, that's not a bad hit, yeah, though. Yeah, it's a good hit. Look, look, at, look at the cue ball. Oh, that's a oh, beautiful hit. Look at this. shot. Yeah, he shot. almost didn't want it to go. Yeah, it might have been a better shot if it didn't go, I believe. Yeah, I'd have to agree. He's... A, He's well, can he kick at the inside of the uh, five ball? Can he can he roll the ball down there and pinch it? It's awfully hard to tell from here. Yeah, I, uh, the view we just had, I would say. Larry is now looking at the nine off the two. Oh, yeah. He looked too late. Or the oh, two yeah. off the nine. He might be. Yeah. I don't know. The how will he get to the six? Well, the five nine. does it. I mean, the four. The four. If that ball kisses off the nine, he could shoot the four right into that six. If it's dead, and if it is, go ahead. Go ahead and shoot it. Yeah, you don't like where you're at. You know, you might not outmove them. If this ball has any chance at all, shoot it. <laughs> He's still looking at it. Four into the six, into the two, off the nine. He's still looking at it. Yeah. That, well, definitely, he could shoot that. Yeah, it's but either this. good or it isn't. How smart is that remark? Oh, what a nice angle this is. Great camera it. work. Yeah. Well, he's still looking at it. Well, if it has a chance, go ahead and shoot it, Neville, because you're going to get the worst of it. Here goes the 13 into the 6, the 2 off the 9. It appears that yeah. uh, wide open here. And he's going to bank the 8 towards his pocket, too. A 2 win. Well, it went. The only problem is he ducked. <laughs> Well, you know, if he rolls this in, he has the five. A good bank on the five. He can win the game. He has to roll this ball in. Oh, I 
don't think Larry's going to roll it in. So oh, yeah. He's got the five if he rolls no, it in. he doesn't in. shoot oh, that. I don't he's like that. Nah, I like rolling it in. Forget about this, buddy. You know, you got out of the trouble now. Roll the ball in. Take the bank on the five. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to, and he, it's going to be his undoing. You know, you know, shoot the right shot, even if you miss it. Take your chances. Yeah, yeah. yeah. roll that ball in, and there's no risk. You make it, you got a nice bank, and then you fall on the three and the six. Yeah, I didn't like that shot. Well, he was going for all the gusto. Yeah, and, uh, but no good. That's one of the balls that goes from the five. I mean, you know, it's an easy shot. You know, if life came to the bank on the five, you're supposed to win all the time. You know, it isn't like he was shooting uh, and having a tough shot. He was shooting a, at a bank that, you know, he figured to make, and it was safe. You know, and now, you know, he's going to... Does he have a loss? Well, part of his undoing was that he just made a tremendous trick shot, and he wants to go out from that. And uh, rather than give it conservative and grind <laughs> further, I think uh, his patience is worn thin. I'm, I, I agree that your shot analysis is correct. I'm just saying in his mindset... He wanted to make a glamorous shot and go ahead and win the game from there, and people be a, a buzz throughout the whole hall. Did you see what Larry did? Yeah, and well. He's going to pay the price. It was the wrong shot. And he's paid the price and slept in the car before. Yeah. Is, is he on the, did he lose one match? Probably did. Probably did. I think he did. I know that Efren's undefeated in this yeah. one pocket event thus yeah, far. Is. And uh, Neville might be packing his bags. You know, he didn't have a great tournament here so far. You know, there's still the nine ball, of course. This is the second game we play, the uh, one pocket, and then our final game in the feature game is nine ball. Effort did not draw the ball again very well there. He you know, kind of flinched at it, didn't I he? I think he needs work on that tip. You know, he's so good, he's overcoming it. <laughs> yeah. Nice speed. Perfect. Okay, what happens next? Play for a bank. Draw back a little and then cross the uh, six or try to do something to get to the 11. See what angle he can, he can make this and draw the ball and have a cut on the 11. But I like drawing back and getting the cross on the six. Hmm. Looks like he's going to try to bounce forward and, you know, he's spinning around for the 11. Yeah, look at this. Down too far. Yeah, he overdid it. He overdid it, but he's going to shoot it anyway, I believe. He's just not going to be uh, keeping control of the cue ball for anything further. I like uh, crossing to the six. Yeah. You know, Efren's the newest member of the Billiards Hall of Fame. He was elected yeah. last year. and. I think uh, most everyone feels like he was quite deserving of that honor. Yeah. Well, it looks Great like he's player, and he has many more years of it. Two-wheeler on the eight. I don't know. Larry's back is against the wall. Larry wants to shoot at something. I wouldn't necessarily want to tempt him at this point. Larry is a, a, a fearless shot maker. Uh, occasionally a careless shot maker, however. All right, new matchup, take number 20, Danny Wardrop. Well, he's Tom hanging by a thread. Has to win this game, and then everything changes because it's his break. All right, to, so rail, to rail the ball. Watch the speed here. Watch the speed. It yeah, makes Brown, defense anyway, you know, you can't just go ahead and shoot something. You got to, you got to defend. Okay, we got three to two uh, ball game in favor of Reyes. Larry would hate to have to kick at the eighth ball. I don't know if he can see it straight on to take it away, but don't be, don't be surprised if he shoots at the sixth ball about 100 miles an hour. Oh, I don't really I think so. Really. How's the three look? The three kissing too three's much. Three's a possibility. Uh, yeah. He didn't even look He's at it. He's shooting so. at it now, I believe. Well, you were right. He shot 100 miles an hour at the six, and Efren is liking it. That was a chance to win, but it was a big, bigger chance to lose. 
That's not one packet, though. I mean, it's great, like you say, if you pop it in and you run out, the crowd goes wow and claps and all that. But uh, your landlord wants you to play safe. Well, he's a, he has a willingness to shoot. And when he's on and when he's right, he makes those shots. He's uh, heroic. And people do not understand that he maybe he didn't use the best uh, of judgment or discretion with his shot selection. He just executes. And when he's a little bit off, he looks terrible. Good shot. It still didn't make a great sound drawing it, did it? No, it didn't. Efren's running balls at will now. It's over. He needs two balls. I think you can uh, throw dirt on Larry's face. <laughs> well, he's a great kid. Madison, Wisconsin. Terrific player. He's had a virtual stranglehold on the state of Wisconsin for many years. I tell you, and that's where he is. And that, surprisingly, wins the match. Well, a Hall of Famer can make you look a little bad, too. Okay, are we going to do an interview? or We're sure going to try to get Efren up here, yeah. so. We're going to get up. Let's we're just hang on. Here. Welcome back, everybody. We have a recent Hall of Fame inductee, Efren Reyes, fresh from a nice victory over a very tough, a very game, Larry Neville. Efren, uh, you know, in the first game, you set the tone. You, you banked the ball that was betting the game on that bank. Uh, Larry had a ball hanging. Oh, uh, I don't remember that uh, the first game that I win, but I know he, he got me already when the, the ball, and then they, he gave me a shot. Yeah, but uh, you, you remember the bank, don't you? It was yeah. up on the side, and you spliced it in. He had a ball hanging oh, yeah, down that, here. That, yeah, the last 14, I had to shoot that because uh, he been I shoot the, the, he got a ball in the, in the pocket, you know. But uh, I tried to bank already. I, I can make to carry the other ball in his pocket, but he's still nothing about if I miss it too. Uh -huh. So if I make it, he's still in it. But I got a shot already to bank. This is straight. Yeah. So I had to shoot. And you're going to have to shoot at some point to get two balls anyway. Yeah. Danny correctly uh, yeah. did the analysis of that. It was an yeah. interesting scenario that came up. Okay, tell me this. Are you having trouble drawing the ball? Are you under drawing a I'm, little? I'm scared. I'm scared to draw, to, to play draw now. It shows. Yeah, it looks like I, it, it, my cue ball now it don't work much. Do you yeah. think the tip has uh, had no, something no, to do not, with it? No, not the tips. When I play practice, it's fine. But in the real game, I can <laughs> A little, uh, yeah. Well, that's being very honest. Because it shows that you are having a little yeah. trouble drawing the ball, and you're going other ways rather than draw the ball. Yeah. I'm looking for, uh, you know, to not to draw the ball, looking to polish, yeah. Well, see, another thing. You keep winning, you have to keep talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyway, you play great, okay. like you always Thank do. You. Congratulations, and good luck in the rest of them. Thank you. And good luck and congratulations from all of us here at AccuStats. And come right back because we're going to have some more great one-pocket action here from Louisville, Kentucky.